In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get clients with LinkedIn automation this year without getting banned. Now, LinkedIn recently has been on a rampage banning certain Chrome extensions and scraping tools. So now more than ever, it's important to choose the right tool that works with LinkedIn. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have a system that you can plug and play to get clients on LinkedIn, 100% autopilot and stress-free. So if you want to generate leads, calls booked and clients from LinkedIn, you ultimately have two choices. Choice number one is to use LinkedIn ads. Now LinkedIn ads is native to the platform and you can basically pay to have your posts and your content appear in front of your target decision maker. Now that sounds like an awesome thing, but when you get into the actual nitty and gritty of it, you realize it's pretty expensive. I've personally spent tens of thousands of dollars on LinkedIn and I can tell you now the CPMs are pretty high. This diagram over here shows the benchmarks by a company called Databox and they see an average CPM across the whole platform around $26.91. Now in my past, I've been generally advertising to more niche and specific audiences. And I've seen my CPM hit $70 to $100. That means $100 to advertise to a certain group of people. On the other hand, if you go to Facebook ads, just to contextualize, you might be paying on average five to $10 for a CPM. So there's a very big difference between the cost you pay on LinkedIn compared to any other platform. I'm not saying that it can't work and that you shouldn't do it, but that is generally a little bit expensive to kick off. But your second option is much, much more affordable. It's LinkedIn outreach. And LinkedIn outreach is basically when you go and send a connection request and you begin to speak to clients directly one-on-one. -on -one. And now this is the real power of LinkedIn. LinkedIn has so much data and such an amazing database in the tool called LinkedIn Sales Navigator. You can basically find the exact person you want to speak to and send them a message. Now, whilst it's more affordable, it's a little bit time consuming if done manually. You could literally spend hours clicking buttons and trying to find profiles and clicking the connect button and then sending them a message. This is why typically if you want to do LinkedIn outreach, you should use a LinkedIn outreach automation tool because all of this can get handled on autopilot for you. So there are a few mistakes I see with LinkedIn outreach and automation and people doing it. And I want to tell you what those mistakes are before you make them. The first is trying to ask for a meeting in the first message. So you go into an automation tool or maybe you do it manually and you maybe say something along the lines of, Hey, I help my clients do X, Y, Z. Do you want to have a chat? Now that is far too aggressive and far are too presumptive. You are presuming that the prospect is open to buy right now and you're presuming that the prospect even gives a shit about what you're saying. That's definitely the wrong way to be attacking this problem. The next mistake I consistently see is aggressive follow-ups. People essentially spamming their prospects with follow-up messages trying to get them to book in a meeting. Maybe they send their Canonly link, maybe they send their phone number, maybe they just say the word bump. Now I can tell you from experience that this is a horrendous tactic and the reason is because prospects on LinkedIn have a chat history with you. That means they can see everything you said to them for an infinite amount of time. So if for whatever reason this prospect isn't in market right now, which is typically the reason why people don't buy and they come into market later on, do you think they're going to go with you if you've been spamming them in their inbox several times over? You're also going to have a hit on your organic reach of your content because when people ignore your DMs, they also tend to ignore your posts and that has a downward effect on anything you're doing on LinkedIn organic posting. And finally, the other mistake I see is formal tonality on LinkedIn. And I know that sounds a little bit weird. We're on a business platform. We're trying to be professional. But what I see is people essentially writing not how they speak. And that can come across as pretty jarring, pretty third person, pretty pull up your tie, very awkward and polite. As a result, those messages don't feel very warm to respond to. Now, on the other hand, what is the right way to get leads? Well, step one is you need to leverage relevant signals. And relevant signals means you need to make sure that the people you're outreaching to actually want to be out outreach to. And a relevant signal is some sort of indicator, whether it's public or private data, that this person actually wants to see your message and actually might be in market. Now, the best relevant signals can be things like if they've commented on a post, if they've recently fundraised, or maybe they put out a news article. Whatever these relevant signals are, if you can leverage them in your message, you will have a much better chance of getting a reply. And again, the reason for this is timing makes up a big part of response rate. The better you can time your message to be in line with their market buying window, the more likely you are to get a response. Now, I mentioned earlier, don't ask for a meeting up front and you're probably thinking, well, what do I do instead? And my suggestion is to offer value first. Now, value can mean so many different things. It can be as simple as saying, hey, I saw your ads were not doing so great. I have made a video for you, which you can watch, which will show you three things to fix. Super simple. You can also say something along the lines of, hey, I know you do this sort of activity and you probably use these certain suppliers. The recent price price increase may have been
hit on your margin. I have another supplier that's a little bit cheaper for you. Now that type of messaging is both relevant and it offers value. It's like, hey, you should open this message. You should reply to me because you gain something out of it. And then finally, I highly recommend slow follow-ups. So what this means is you do your first message, you then do a second message just to bump pretty quickly because sometimes we just keep people at the wrong time of their day. And then I wouldn't send another message for at least 10, 15 days. And the reason why is because if someone hasn't responded to the first two messages in quick succession, it's almost very unlikely that they're interested in buying right now. So instead, we should wait for a portion of time until they're more likely to be in some sort of buying window. Now, if you're going to do this manually, it's quite an arduous task. You've got to basically click around onto profiles, find someone you want to connect with, check if they're qualified, and then send them a connection request. All in all, quite painful. Instead, you can leverage LinkedIn automation or outreach tools. Now, the goal with a LinkedIn outreach automation tool is to basically ensure that you're maximizing your LinkedIn quota every single week. And for those of you, if you don't know, every week LinkedIn resets your weekly connection limit and the number is between 100 to 200 per week. Now, if you're doing this manually, you might forget to do it. You might not have time to do it. And so therefore you miss out on your quota. And one of the best ways to get clients on LinkedIn is to be connected with them. Instead, you can use a LinkedIn automation tool that will essentially make sure you're maximizing your quota every single week. And it's all done on autopilot without you thinking about it. And it's pretty simple why this works. If we have more relevant connections and we send more messages, we're more likely to book in more meetings with qualified prospects. Now, before you go and start using an automation tool, I want to warn you of some dangers just to make sure that you do this right. There are several things that can go wrong with LinkedIn automations. Number one is that the LinkedIn automation tool uses something called a proxy for you. So they log into your account from another location, but they don't use the same proxy whenever they log into your account. So what it ends up doing is it ends up moving your account from geography to geography, which looks to LinkedIn like you're moving around and therefore using an automation tool. This can get you banned. The second mistake I see with LinkedIn automation tools is that they don't have the correct safety limits in place. There are lots of sub rules to what you can do on LinkedIn. I mentioned one of them, which was the weekly connection limit, but you also have an action limit to LinkedIn as well. Now a bad LinkedIn tool will not correctly limit your usage and may get you banned. So you've got to be very careful of that. And naturally LinkedIn doesn't really want us to be using automation tools because they would rather us use option one from the beginning of the video, which is to run ads, which makes LinkedIn more money. So effectively, a LinkedIn automation tools developer team is constantly playing a cat and mouse game with the LinkedIn platform. So we have to be very careful about who we go with. Now, I've personally used a lot of LinkedIn automation tools, like literally every single one I have used in some way, shape or form. Now, this one I like because of how good they are with safety and their UX and UI is really good. So this LinkedIn tool specifically follows connection limits. So it makes sure that it stays under the connection request limit per week. And it knows that LinkedIn LinkedIn resets the counter every Monday at 2 a.m. Pacific. It also follows LinkedIn's action limits. So each of our LinkedIn accounts is limited to 200 actions per day. That's stuff like liking a post, commenting, viewing a profile, all these sort of things. And this tool adheres to this limit. This tool also has a static residential proxy. You don't pay for this. And it means that your IP address is static. So it doesn't look like you're using an automation tool. This again is really rare actually across LinkedIn tools. So for these reasons, I really like it. And you can actually see the fact that it got a static residential residential proxy because when you log in, it will show you on the back end of your LinkedIn what the IP address is that you're logging in with. So this tool is called HeyReach if I haven't said it already. And I'm going to show you a little bit around it so that you can use it too. So this is the dashboard and it shows you how many connections you sent, how many accepted messages, replies. It gives you a really good overview of the performance of your account. So I'm going to show you how to create a campaign right now so you can do it yourself. So to use it, all you got to do is head over to the LinkedIn accounts page and you can then connect your LinkedIn account to the platform. So you can see on this profile, we have six accounts connected here because LinkedIn has a really cool account rotation feature. So as I told you before, LinkedIn has this limit of 200 connection requests per week. But if you wanted to go above that limit, what would you do? So HeyReach came out with an ingenious idea. Why don't we let you connect more accounts onto the platform and then HeyReach will rotate those accounts across all the leads you're trying to hit up. So instead of hitting 200 leads per week, you can hit a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. You can scale for as many accounts as you have. So all you got to do is connect account over here. And very recently, by the way, HeyReach has a new feature called infinite login. Sometimes you may have been disconnected by an outreach or automation tool. HeyReach doesn't do that. You just click on here and it will make sure you're always connected. So it will never have any downtime on your account. Now, once you've connected your account, you can click configure limits. Now this is already all preset up for you, but you can see all the action limits that HeyReach applies to your account to make sure it stays safe, which is awesome. We don't need to do anything over here, but what we do need to do is add in a lead list. So if you click over to leads and click add leads, you can
can see there are various ways that you can add leads to LinkedIn. You can do it through the search bar, through Sales Navigator. If you have LinkedIn Recruiter, you can use that. You can even import LinkedIn post reactors or commenters onto a lead list so that you can reach out to them. And that's really useful if people are commenting for a lead magnet or they're showing some sort of intent for a product or a service. So I'm briefly going to show you how to do the Sales Navigator because most of you probably have Sales Navigator if you're taking your outreach seriously. So if you click continue over here, you also just need to add a list name. Let's call it test one. And then you're going to select some senders. So we'll use Elias as an account. And then we've got to add in the search URL. Now this is the sales navigator URL of the search that you do. And this is really cool because you don't need any scraping tools. You just need to copy and paste that URL into HeyReach. So we can head over to LinkedIn sales navigator. We can run a lead list search. Let's for example, let's look for CEOs. So I'm going to write CEO over here. And I want them to be working at a, let's say privately held company, which has 51 to 200 employees. I want the person to personally be in New York. So I can put New York over here. And then I'm going to get a lead list, which ultimately refreshes around 8,500 leads already. I want to make sure that they're posted on LinkedIn so that I know they're active on the platform. And I have a list of potentially qualified people already here. All I got to then do is copy and paste the sales navigator URL, head over back to HeyReach and just paste it. And I just click start importing. And it's literally as simple as that. Now, HeyReach is going to do all the work behind the scenes and get every Every lead from that list into HeyReach's lead list so that it can then send an outreach to them. And we can literally see it populating right now as I was speaking to you, which is so cool. So we're at 4% down, we've done 100 out of 2,350, and it will take a couple minutes to get the full list. Now we can see over here that the leads have been imported, and we're now going to head over to campaigns to create the campaign to go with the leads. So we click start new campaign, let's give it a test one list. So we're going to click over here, we're going to have test one list. I'm going to select the lead list, which was test one list, and I'm going to probably click some exclude option. I want to exclude leads, for example, that have been contacted from other Hayridge campaigns, maybe messaged by other senders and contacted by the same sender from other Hayridge accounts. And I'm going to click a bunch of accounts that will work. So let me say Elias and I'm going to say Martins. I'll click continue again and I'm going to start creating actions. Now this is really cool because Hayridge has like a visual flow version diagram. So you can actually see as you're building the campaign, what it looks like to make it really easy for you. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to check, are they a connection? If they're a connection, we don't need to do anything because we want to connect with new people. If if they're not a connection, I'm going to send them a connection request. Now, what I like to do is I like to make sure the connection request is blank. And that's because data has shown and HeyReach has shown this too, that if you add a connection note, you have a lower acceptance rate. So I think it was around like 32% acceptance rate if you don't have a connection request note and around 26 to 28% if you do. I think in most scenarios, it actually is a lot lower than 26 to 28% because most people don't even know how to write a good connection note anyway. So it's going to be much, much lower. So I like to do this, just leave it blank. Click save. After they've accepted, I typically wait a day or maybe a few hours. You can change this to hours or days, just depending on what you want to do. Let's say three hours, add action, and then I'm going to send a message. And this is where I do my opening point to maybe discuss with them, to maybe try to get them interested in me to have a back and forth. Now, depending on your lead list, you can make any sort of message you want. For example, you could say, hey, saw you're growing really fast at company. What was the big unlock recently? And it could be as simple as that just to start a conversation. Some people will find that that's not direct enough and you can obviously change this message as to whatever you please. For example, say we were reaching out to big SaaS companies in New York. We could say, hey, so you're growing really fast at company. Guessing it's got a lot to do with those ads. I see around everywhere. How's it all going? And it could be as simple or more indirect than that. Now imagine you're an ads agency. That might be a really good way to soften in the blow from a cold outreach campaign to make it easier to have a conversation. Now, when you use a personalized variable, you just need to copy and paste it over to the format message and just remove the variable just in case that this date is not available. And then we just click save and it's as simple as that. Now, all we got to do is click continue and you just click launch campaign. And that's it. You literally have an outreach campaign going and it took about five minutes to get going. Now, remember that dashboard, you can go back here and look at the results of that campaign. And you can even go to something called the uni box, which lets you see all the conversations across all the accounts you connected up so you can reply to them all in a singular place. And that means you only need to use one tool for all your outreach and all your inbox management. Now using automation like this software allowed me to send over 5 million DMs. So click here to check out the next video where you can learn exactly how I did that, all the scripts I used and exactly what had to be done to make sure this system worked at scale. Now you can use all these learnings for your own LinkedIn outreach, for your own DMs, building your own lead lists and ultimately to grow your own business. My name was Aman. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.